Hey everyone, this is Feng Zhu and welcome to this week's uh, Design Cinema. So we'll get back to drawing this week. Uh, this is a demo that I just completed, uh, I think m last week or this week, oh this week, uh, pretty uh, pretty recent, uh, showing, demonstrating to students a different approach to sketching. This is from our production sketching class, a full-time uh, course here. Uh, basically the the goal of this class to, is to show students how to draw and design using various techniques. So the design part of it is actually not the key in this class. We have other classes for that. The The core of this class is about drawing. So this week I'm showing them how to do a tighter drawing versus a loose sketch. But we do start with the overall. As you can see here, the, the, uh, the reference of a knight is on the left and my pose in a very uh, quick sketch w method uh, is on the right, right? So I'm sketching this out really quickly. Now the inspiration for this came from um, just some games I've been playing lately. Uh, one of them is uh, Dead Rising 2, which I thought is quite funny of a game. Bunch of zombies running around in a mall. So they, hey, why don't we take that concept and turn it into medieval knights or something that are also zombieized? It's just a very easy theme uh, for our students to adopt to. Because again, this class is not really about design, it's about sketching. So we usually pick a uh, design element that's quite simple to understand so the students don't get compounded with multiple uh, problems. Like you have to learn how to sketch at the same time, you have to design something cool. So it's quite simple for them to get a head around. So um, this is done in Painter. Uh, I'm not sure what version this is. Uh, this is a class uh, demo. So the machine there has a different version than the one I use uh, in my own studio. I believe it's Painter 10. Uh, at home I'm still using 9, I believe, but they're very similar. Uh, to each other. Now, I don't even know what the difference are between uh, 9 and 10. But anyways, we're sketching with Painter. Um, here I am just kind of drawing everything else. So I started with a rough pose. You, you can see kind of the underneath uh, sketch there. Very loose just to get the overall pose done. Again, if you watch the previous videos, you'll know the purpose of that. Because in production, uh, you always want to be doing the bigger picture first. So at any time, uh, art director or director or producer, whoever wants to see what you're working on, you have something to show versus like you have a head finish, but the rest of the entire drawing or design is not even uh, on paper. So we start with the rough, and this is a second stage rough pass, which we, we find the design. The first pass was just a pose. The second pass is the designs. So we look at a reference of knights. You can see that uh, below that, I put together a bunch of references of just uh, medieval knights. So at least we get the armor and some influences in there correctly. right? We don't have to follow it 100%, but it's always good to have reference. So you, you kind of have a good idea of the overall picture of what, what overall design you're trying to achieve, right? So even though these are zombie knights with the very video game or comic book kind of approach, you still ground it in reality. So this guy here on the right, he's going to be a more, uh, I guess, a bigger knight than the one on the left. He, his armor is all exploded, exposing his uh, infected arm. And that's what I'm sketching out here. Now this video has been sped up, obviously, uh, by quite a bit. This actual demo took about, uh, I'm guessing, about two and a half hours to do. And you're watching this in about half an hour, so we could compress it. And also, if I don't compress it, some parts of the video will actually slow down because I'm talking to the students, so it's not good to play in real time. Here I'm just figuring out the hand. You can see just drawing another pose, showing students what's going on underneath, right? We always draw what's there in, in this school versus just drawing by eyeball. So if a hand is holding something, you try to want to figure out what, what exactly it's doing behind the weapon. Right, so more refinement drawings. So the goal of this uh, this, this uh, I guess, uh, sketch for our students was to uh, finish it to a very high line drawing degree. We're not going to paint it. That's for next term. right? So this term is just line art. But we want to finish the line art to a pretty tight so it's production ready. So 3D artists could take this design and take it to the next stage. All right, so we're back in Painter. And I'm right now what you see is I'm trying to bring it to Photoshop and make a giant canvas for it so we can start the next stage which is the tighter line drawing. But the RAM of the machine is getting killed. So what I'm doing is I'm separating the drawings out to two different canvases. This way, the uh, memory usage is a lot less. And once that's done, I now start the real line drawing process. right? So this is a triple pass. We got the super rough pose, the secondary design pass, and now it's the, uh, the finishing line art. And the look I'm going for here is uh, kind of a like comic bookish. Um, line art, right, using some black uh, heavy lines to uh, illustrate the darker areas, which you will see later as we go re and refine this drawing. 
So here's a. I started with this guy because I think it's more fun to draw, and part of this is also uh, confidence building. Right? When you're drawing and you finish, for example, a nice painting or a sketch, uh, and you have a series of them to do, I tend to work on the one that I know I could do okay on. So once you finish that, your confidence goes way up. Uh, you know, no matter how many years you've done this, it's always a little bit of nervousness going into anything new uh, that you haven't drawn, especially with with a demo like this where where I'm drawing live in front of the students, and you really cannot screw up, right? Because uh, once you do that, the students are like, hey, wait a second, what's going on here? So drawing this live, quite nervous, but this guy, I felt like hey, I think I could draw this guy better than the one I started with, which is on the left side. So it's a, it's a confidence booster. Okay, uh, Ignore that. That's showing students how to do scratches and uh, how scratches work. So it's a very strange thing there. Uh, so uh, this process will just go on for a while. Uh, I think this for the rest of this, at least segment one of this YouTube video, we're going to just be sketching it out. So I'll take this time to just, I guess, talk about various random uh, things. So this brush I'm using is very old. This is a brush imported in from Painter 4, which is unbelievably old. I think it goes back to 1998 or 99, something like that. But the brush is still good, and Painter is very um, backwards friendly, I guess. They still read the brush from that many years ago, like 10 years ago, right, this brush. So I like it, uh, but you can find Painter comes with literally, I think, thousands of brushes or something insane that you could just find the one you like. It's not really about the tool, it's about what's comfortable. For me, this brush is fun to draw with, uh, whereas some of my students try this brush and they hate it. So it's up to you to uh, to find the one that you like working with the best, and that's that's the one you stick to, right? These little skulls, they're actually not meant to be skulls, they're more like a sculptural thing, but I think when I rendered it, it actually came out looking like human skulls. But I want it to look like... Um, just a sculptural thing that he's wearing around his neck, and as a design, you know, it's not the most original. It's kind of generic in a way. However, uh, you do want to play with uh, human emotions, pre-build, I guess, intuitions into humans when you're designing. So even though this is a uh, drawing demo, uh, I still want to explain that to our students and to you as well. So when you're designing, for example, something evil, you know, things like skull, things like red, darkness, spikes, um, you know, chains, these things, they automatically play with the, uh, I guess, the perception of evil that's built into uh, most human beings, right? When they see a skull or they see things, they know, okay, this is probably not a good guy. So in entertainment design, we kind of build upon that. So that's why in most films or games you play, bad guys have a certain feel and good guys have a certain feel, and you don't need to explain anything. You just you just know, right? And that's a good way to start at least with design, and then you could get most more sophisticated as you go. So, but in in general, video game type of um, environments or design studios, you you tend to stick with um, you know uh, playing with these kind of rules because your audience is very wide based. So you have to make sure the little kid who's uh, five years old know that, hey, that's a bad guy. And the uh, same with a mature audience who's, you know, say, 55-year-old playing your game. They also know, hey, that's a bad guy uh, without using any word or dialogue. Okay, so this process here takes a while. You have to be patient. Uh, but for me, this is the, the relaxing part of any uh, work process. The first step, which was the pose, is generally kind of... Not too super hard, but the second step was still rough. But that's the hardest part, which is what do you draw? What do you design? Once that stage is over, this is just detail filling. And uh, usually during this stage, I just listen to music and relax, talk to my friends, uh, whatever. It's The concentration level goes way, way down because you're just focusing on detailing out. The design is actually done, at least in your head, right? What you're trying to do now is just trying to make sure other people can understand what you're trying to uh, say that's only in your head. Right? So it's just detail building. Now I'm going back and forth between Painter and Photoshop, as you can see. Uh, it's all drawn in Painter, but I opened in Photoshop because Photoshop has a better, um, uh, how should I put it, a viewing uh, thing. Because if, when you're viewing Painter at, uh, say, 33 or 66%, the uh, image tends to be very pixelated looking, whereas uh, Photoshop does a better job at every, I guess, every other two zoom levels. So Photoshop looks good at 50 and looks good at 100, looks good at 25. Uh, Whereas in Painter, unless you're 100%, it's always kind of pixelated looking. Uh, something they never fix, which uh, quite annoying when you're doing tight line drawings because you can't tell if your lines are connecting. For a character, it's fine, but when you're doing mechanical stuff, sometimes you can't tell, for example, you need a very tight tolerance on an angle, and the pixelation can, uh, doesn't allow you to see it. Uh, whereas Photoshop, you can see it quite well.